and before you know it, you're off to Omaha and you find out you've got ovarian cancer and it's, it really knocks, it's like, it like knocks you off your foundation. That's the best I could explain because it just like, it's such a shock. It was tough. They, they gave me two real strong chemos. I um, lost my hair after the first treatment and that was, I knew it was coming out and they said you might as well shave it so it was right before Christmas my grandkids were all there and they all shaved, took turns shaving my hair and it was gone. It's a shock but you know, you know you're going to get through it and it's, you just pray that it's going to be better and you're going to survive it. I didn't know what to tell them and before I even started to tell them, my oldest granddaughter then was 14 and my grandson was 16 and my granddaughter came over. She just lives across the road from me, her and her little brother, and, and they're always at grandma's. And I told her, I said, Brooke, I, grandma wants to tell you something. And she said, what? And I said, I have cancer. She says, I know grandma, mom told me. And I said, but I'm gonna be okay, Brooke. And she says, I know you will, grandma. I know you will, you're a fighter. <laughs> and you know, all the kids knew, their parents all told them and we talked about it openly. And then my youngest little grandkids, they were just, what, wow, three and one year old when I first got cancer. And when I lost my hair, I was scared to have them see me with no hair. So when they came home for Christmas that year, I told my daughter, I'm wearing my wig because I don't want the kids to be scared, seeing me completely bald headed. You just have to be positive. I've always been a positive person. Always have been. Always been a positive person. And so between prayer and being positive, that's what's done it, you know. I just know it is.